Welcome back, Camden Catholic. Mm, Y'all are doing so well right now. By the way, I was just doing some plans and stuff for the rest of this unit. Just wanted to give you a heads up that right now, as of right now, it's looking like your next test will be around uh, October 30th, all right? That Tuesday, okay? So anyway, but today we were talking about the struggle of the orders, right? The struggle of the orders when the plebeians boycott the entire economy and the military, and they went from that like three-tiered government system to this bad boy, which was much more even and much better off, right? So following the struggle of the orders, they're going to add tribunes. We're going to be added to the government. Now what you need to do is like underneath the second chart that's right behind my noggin right now, where you see veto in Latin, what it means, all that stuff. What you need to do is write new laws are going to be passed, right? Which actually, new laws are going to be passed and new orders are going to be added, right? So for example, plebes would now be allowed to marry patricians, right? That was a big one. So before the struggle of the orders, plebes could not marry patricians, right? But now, following it, the classes could mix together, right? Depending on if it was a male or female would actually dictate the class that they would move up or into, right? So, tribunes are going to be added to the government, which was the 10 plebes that were given the power of the veto to counteract the Senate, right? There you go. Now what you need to know, a couple of things, okay? Number one... The plebes and the tribunes are going to have the 12 tables, Roman law, write it down underneath this, posted in the forum, right? And then, lastly, they're going to add some different people to the entire system. They're going to be separate people all together, right? So over here, you can put like these things. They're going to add two people. One is called praetors, and praetors are actually judges, right? Much like our Supreme Court. And then also they're going to add censors, right? You ever heard of the phrase being censored? You know in class and I'll be, sometimes I'll be like, oh man, uh, she's just, or like Caesar just got his kicked, right? Like I got censored, right? I bleeped it out. So censors will be added to the Roman government. That actually is a word that we come from restricting. And those are people that actually uh, like watched the government officials, right? They're the ones that decided if they were doing a good job or not, right? They would actually say, oh, well, you know, this judge isn't doing his job right, okay? So, like, if you actually, like, I'll get... So, there you go. They would actually watch government officials. This was the censors, and the praetors were judges, right? So, they would actually add different little levels to the government. It just became much more even, much more equal, right? So, in the last flip we were just talking about, too, we talked about Roman conquest, right? So, now we're going to the end of Roman conquest, and we're like, this is so confusing! Well, really quick, we talked about briefly Roman government. Then we went struggle of the orders. Then we talked about Roman conquest. Now we're talking about the aftermath of conquest and kind of picking up the pieces. We're entering the era of the Roman civil wars, right? So, anyway, let's get after it, though. So... Problems with Roman conquest in the late Republic, right? So we're now entering the time period. We're in the Republic time period still. We're getting towards the late Republic, though, right? So problems, though, with this are going to be things like, for example, how about I move my noggin real quick, and then it'll help out quite a bit. Go down here, okay? So problems is manpower. Number one, they're going to lose many, many, many soldiers in the during the wars of expansion, right? When they're actually expanding, they're taking over Carthage, and they're taking over Spain, and they're taking over the Gauls in France, and they're taking over all these other people. They're going to lose a lot of soldiers, right? So, Roman Constitution also was for one city-state, not a fledgling empire. Another big problem is, like, their setup, excuse me, their setup for the government was not meant for everybody. It was meant for just one city-state. So their government was kind of just, like, hinging a little bit, okay? Also, the veterans, the biggest problem that a lot of the, uh, like, following all these wars of expansion was actually the problem that was carried by the veterans and the families of all these veterans, right? So the veterans and the families were really, really struggling. They felt unsupported and very taken advantage of. The countryside also is destroyed, okay? Soldiers are coming back to straight garbage. It was really, really, really bad. Then on the top of it, some men are profiting off of these wars, okay? So the big thing about it is, like, let's say hypothetically, we're going to use two kids in class. You got, like, like Deacon, right? Deacon was like, I fought in the Punic Wars, and I saved everyone, and I'm going to go home to Rome where my wife and children are waiting for us in our country villa, right? A villa, really quick, is a very large countryside estate, okay? So, and then he returns home to see 
That is, Villa has been destroyed, right, in one of the Roman Wars of Expansion. And the Roman government did not care. That was the biggest problem, all right? So Deacon would actually, like, be very upset. He's like, oh, my God, my home's been destroyed. My family and I have been left homeless. What am I going to do? And so a patrician would approach him and be like, hey, bro. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Trey Thorpe, right? He's a patrician. He's like, I'm going to buy that land from you, okay? Yeah, and I'm going to make my villa even bigger, but I'll pay you for that land. And he's like, okay, well, I want, Deacon's like, I want this price. And he said, Trey's like, nah, man, it's halfway destroyed. I'm going to have to put some money into it. I'll only give you this much. And Deacon would be forced to buy or to sell his land off, right? And then Trey Thorpe goes up and steals Deacon's wife and then runs off into the sunset with her. That's really messed up. Now, anyway, so civil wars are going to be resulting as well from all of these rifts, okay? Wealthy Romans are going to begin to buying up land from veterans that had no money. Veterans are finding little to almost no work and are almost no care from the government. And then the rise of the Gracchi, right? So the Gracchi, Tiberius and Gaius Gracchus, right? So Tiberius Gracchus is the first one, okay? We call them the Gracchi when we're referring them to them in a plurality sense, right? The biggest thing about the Gracchi is they were the giant reformers, of the entire government. They were tribunes. They started out as plebes. They started at the bottom and got all the way to the top, right? They were, Tiberius Gracchus was a plebe. He was actually elected as a tribune. He wanted to strip land from the wealthy and have it given to the veterans. He actually helped finance an entire bill that would actually pay for it and help them and give veterans money that they deserve. And actually, he's going to be killed in cold blood, okay? Like, Tiberius Gracchus would be actually slain by his fellow, like, by other patricians in a very, very bad plot, right? So, and then his brother pops up, Monoghan, and that's Gaius Gracchus, his brother, also a plebe. He wanted all of his brother's reforms and full citizenship for all Italians. He's shaking things up. He's rocking the boat. He's pissing the patricians off. Everyone's freaking out, right? Also killed in cold blood by the Senate. The Senate actually has him poisoned. <laughs> There's an old story, too, that they say that they somebody slipped the snake into his bed. I don't know if that's true, but I'd be pretty dope if it is. So these reforms, their reforms and the deaths of the Gracchi are going to tri triggle, trigger nothing but civil wars. Now, really quick, on a side note, somewhere over here, somewhere random, all right? Somewhere, somewhere off in the distance, okay? A civil war, what is it? Like, what's a civil war? What's the difference between, like, a regular war and a civil war? Anybody? Very nice job, Spinozzi. I heard you over there. A civil war is a war that happens in one country between two different groups, much like the one that we had, right? Well, here's the thing. Who comes in during times of war in the Roman government? That's right, Emily Kuhn. I heard you. All right, you got it before David Kuhn. You're the better of the twins. The dictators, right? Civil wars demanded the need for strong leaders, right? Enter the dictators, right? So the dictators are going to start coming in. Well, remember, this, who was the chief dictator? The dictator that set the tone for the rest of the dictators that would follow him? Very nice job. I heard you over there. Uh, excuse me. Whoa, sorry. I heard you over there, Brianna, and also Brianna Dutterer. Both Briannas, both in my third period. They would actually come in during times of war, and the chief dictator that they modeled themselves after was a guy named Cincinnatus, right? They're supposed to give the power back following the war. Well, not every dictator did that. This guy did. He was actually a very good example of a great dictator. His name was Sola, right? He was the one that came in following the reforms of the Gracchi, right? So he's going to help conquer several small barbarian tribes in parts of Asia. He's going to stop two civil wars, right? Two separate civil wars. He's going to have, like... Put down, okay? And a lot of these civil wars are actually happening between these veterans and the rich and the wealthy, right? Because remember, the patricians still control the military. They're still the military officers, and the veterans are the ones that already fought in the war and then have been released. So they're having these big, big rifts, and people are drawing alliances. They're like, I like this guy. I like this guy. This is my leader, not blah, 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 blah. So they stop two separate civil wars. He stops them anyway. He's a very strong leader. He actually gave power back to the Republican Senate after nine straight years of war, right? So he's a good dictator. Great version of a dictator, right? Cincinnati, great version of a dictator. Uh, not very many other ones, though, because now we're getting into one that didn't do what he was supposed to. And his name is none other than Julius Caesar, right? So Caesar actually in 59 BC, is going to be elected a consul, right? So remember what we talked about um, really, really quick? Oh, 
I need you to add something to your old notes. If you go ahead and flip backwards, flip backwards when you get to the post struggle the orders, this one, right? That government right there. So really, really quick, underneath consoles, after all the reforms, one plebe, one patrician, one plebe and one patrician were the consoles now. So speaking of one of those patricians, though, one of them went by the name of Julius Caesar, right? The man in the laurel wreath right here next to my noggin. That is Caesar right there. Me and him, wait, hold on. Let me look at him real quick. Maybe he'll, wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Me and him are going to look at each other really quick. So anyway, but uh, yeah, so that is Caesar right there, okay? He wants to rule all of Rome's lands, right? Well, the thing is, is he's going to be elected consul in 59 BC. He's going to reform the army as consul and then go and become a general again, and he's going to capture Gaul. He's going to strike strike a terrible blow to the like old French because remember what did the Gauls do to the Romans back when they were just a little baby little baby empire? That's right, they sacked them, right? So him going in and conquering the Gauls and establishing a new order in France and becoming the governor of Gaul because remember we talked about with the conquest every time they would take it over they would create a new province and then elect a governor to lead that area. Well, he was the governor of Gaul, right? He's going to watch Rome closely though. He's going to bide his time. He's going to wait. He's going to wait. And he knows that he has to come back as the general with the great reputation that he has now. He knows that he has to come back whenever they enter into a civil war again. Because civil wars became like a constant thing in the late Republic. It was like, da -da 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 like constantly people vying for control because they knew that they could be dictators, right? So after three years of war, Caesar is going to be appointed dictator for 10 years, right? So, and when he gets into office, he starts actually doing all of these crazy moves, like creating the very first political alliance, right? So the very first time he actually creates a political alliance, and they go by the names of, it's called the First Triumvirate, right? The First Triumvirate. We have political alliances all the time now, but they're called the First Triumvirate, right? And they're, the guys in the alliance are Caesar, Pompey, and Crassus, right? So Caesar, Pompey, and Crassus. All three of these promise to help advance each other. Pompey and Crassus were both consuls and senators at the time, right? They actually worked in the government right here behind my noggin, whereas Caesar was the dictator. So they promised each other, they were like, look, we're going to help each other out, but the alliance is going to crumble when they disagree on how to govern because these two want Caesar to give up his area of power. And what's going to end up happening is both of these guys are going to end up being dead by the entire time the thing happens. One of them, actually, Pompey, dies in a very, very malicious way. He's actually murdered. And then Caesar and Crassus end up having a civil war against one another yet again, right? So he actually ends up fighting against him. But he wins, and Caesar is a strong leader. The biggest thing and the reason why people loved him so much is he actually improved the lives of the veterans. He makes laws to help the poor. He creates new jobs. He gave citizenship to more people. He's a genius. The people of Rome, right? The last bullet point. The people of Rome loved Caesar. Loved him because he was not trying to advance the role of the patricians. He was trying to advance the role of the plebeians, right? He was like, I will go through the hearts of the plebeians. That is how I'll earn my power, right? So, Vini, Vidi, Vici. I came, I saw, I conquered. And when he said that, well, some historians believe, first of all, that he never actually said it because that was in a Shakespeare play. But if you had to ask me if he ever was to say that, he probably said it referring to the fact that he conquered the Roman government, right? So, he gave citizenship to more people, though. And I'll tell you the story about how all these guys that died in malicious ways, I'll tell you the story about how they all died. Just ask me tomorrow, right? Be like, oh, how'd the Gracchi die again? And uh, I'll tell you the specifics on how they all died. Now, anyway, but this one is a story. You got to love this one, right? This is... <laughs> Sorry, it's just so funny. Just, uh... Now, anyway, so Caesar, though, will be executed in 44 BC, right? Not executed, but actually assassinated. In 44 BC... Caesar was appointed dictator for life. Mm. The Senate was furious. And they actually came up with a plot to try and have Caesar executed, right? They wanted to have Caesar executed, and they wanted to make it so he could never actually have that power. They feared that he was going to make himself king of Rome, right? King of Rome. Some of you are like, well, wouldn't that be an emperor? Well, not yet. The word emperor hadn't been invented yet, right? The Romans had not invented the word emperor yet because the word emperor was a title given to a guy named Augustus, his grandnephew, right? So anyway, in 44 BC, Caesar would be appointed dictator for life. 
okay? The Roman Republic was then a dictatorship. The senators feared that he was going to make himself king. You need to not be writing this entire thing. That is ridiculous. Break it up into bullet points, right? You should maybe write 44 BC, appointed dictator for life. Uh, senators feared he'd make himself king. Uh, then he's going to be stabbed to death in a very famous instance, right? It's called the Ides of March, right? Because it happened on March 15th. The word Ides in Latin actually means the middle, right? So it means the middle of March. Following Caesar's death, first of all, he was actually gang rushed by like a lot of his closest friends in the Senate, right? And one of them that actually was like stabbing at him, he actually had one device that he actually tried to defend himself with. He tried to defend himself with a, uh, like a writing utensil. It was a pen because actually in ancient Rome, they would write on these little wax tables whenever they would actually make like and then lay metal onto them. And that's how they would actually write a lot of stuff. But the craziest thing happened is he actually told out the stylus and tried to fight off the guys that were actually trying to stab him. And most of the people that stabbed him, they were stabbing in the back and in the chest, but they were all superficial wounds. They were like little ones in his shoulders, right? And here, in his legs and stuff. But then Brutus, the real conspirator. The people believe that might have been one of Caesar's illegitimate kids because Caesar's greatest love was Brutus's mom. Yeah, Caesar was hooking up with Brutus's mom, and then he always hated him for that because everybody was like, oh, I bet you're one of Caesar's kids. It's like, no, I'm not. And then so he walks up to Caesar's body as he's laying there bleeding, and he goes up to him, and he slits his throat, right? Oh, gross. Uh, anyway, now, but Caesar is going to die after being stabbed to death in the Ides of March because the government feared that he would make himself king, right? So that, I believe, is going to be it. Oh, and now write this down. We're going to stop right here, right? Because tomorrow we're going to be moving into the Empire period. 29 BC to 476, Rome's greatest military height, right? Due to the fact that they started electing these people called emperors because they were actually known as imperators, right? As in a great general, a title given to a great general after a battle. We'll talk about how they got there, though, tomorrow. I'll see you guys then. I know that was a lot. I know that was a lot. We'll have a long warm-up. We'll sling the ball around a little bit. We'll get this all figured out, all right? So, see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.